I call the Honourable Member Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Tonight, there are thousands of people throughout New Zealand either watching uh, parliamentary TV or listening to Parliament on the radio. I acknowledge what my Green colleague said before, that once upon a time there would have been hundreds and hundreds of thousands of New Zealanders tuned in tonight to, through this debate to listen to the important budget discussion. It's not to say that the discussion isn't important, isn't important. It is to say, though, that the power of, of the parliament to uh, communicate to our country has changed. And I think that's something important for us to reflect on tonight. Uh, Mr Speaker, Parliament TV is almost seven years old and it's a really important uh, institution in our country and I hope that this government isn't going to try and destroy it as they've destroyed public broadcasting in this country. The budget, <clears throat> this is supposed to be an honest debate. Unfortunately, it doesn't feel like an honest debate listening to some of the comments and the, uh, and the speeches on the other side of the House tonight. This budget is being framed by this government as being a budget about jobs and a growing economy. Well, Mr Speaker, I have just got off the phone tonight from one of the 101 uh, workers in South Otago who have been made redundant yesterday. Um, they're um, part of a group of 180 people who have been made redundant in the last uh, month from a forest industry uh, uh, enterprise in South Otago, which has four different plants spread across four different centres, four different towns, Mosgill, Melbourne, Milton and Balclutha. This uh, worker told me tonight that he said it sucks. It sucks what's happening to us. Now, he's been working in that, uh, in that plant for 12 years. He is a good, honest, solid working person, just like the many hundreds and thousands of good, solid working people who have lost their jobs in regional New Zealand under that government. And this uh, for no fault of his own and in an industry which should be expanding and growing and thriving rather than contracting and putting people in regional New Zealand out of work. And this person told me tonight that he doesn't know what, where his future lies. He's got three children. They're settled in schools. Uh, he may need to leave town to find a job somewhere else. Now you, not you, Mr. Speaker, I would like that government to get up and tell me what is the future for him and the other people in that industry tonight. And I would also like the, the member, the list member for Dunedin to actually speak out and actually stick up for his city and his region and say what it is where the job growth is going to come from in that region, because we've just seen 180 jobs lost from South Otago in the last month. And it's, it, if, if that's a sign of a government that is focused on growth and jobs, then uh, I don't know. Uh, it's a fairy tale. It's a fairy tale. It's an absolute fairy tale. Um, one of the important things to note in this debate, though, Mr Speaker, is that under a Labour government, the forest industry and the forest processing industry will be a priority because we actually have a plan for that industry, as we do for another, a number of industries. I haven't seen a plan for any industries under this government. There is, you know, there is rhetoric, there's lots of rhetoric, but when it comes to an actual plan for industry development and growth and actual jobs, where is it? Um, under, the, under a Labour government, however, forest, uh, 
the forestry industry, the forest processing industry will be a priority. In a region such as uh, Otago and Southland, this makes a huge difference. Um, our region contains 11.8 per cent of New Zealand's forest plantations, which is by far the largest area in the South Island and is the second largest in the country. But of the $4.5 billion uh, industry um, uh, that, that that industry is worth per annum, all, half those exports are raw logs which are being processed offshore. And, Mr Speaker, that's what, why we are seeing 180 jobs, the latest set of jobs in, uh, since 2013, um, 40 sawmills resulting in the loss of 1,700 jobs across the country. So I don't think we've seen the last of the demise of this industry in this country under this government, under a Labour government, it would be very different. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'd also like to address the rhetoric that's being uh, spouted on the other side of the House, that this is a government, a budget that's focused on health. Well, very actually, when you, when you look beneath the surface, this is actually represents a cut and it certainly does represent a cut in, in our region, um, a 2.3 per cent cut in real terms for what this budget means to health funding. And when Tony Ryle, the health minister, hyped up the budget saying it was the biggest funding of the health sector to date, he neglected to admit that when you take into account demographic and population changes, which any responsible government would do, um, that it put a massive extra strain on the health sector and district health um, boards. In, in the Southern District Health Board area, which is the whole of Otago and Southland, um, it, the, as I understand it, from looking at the budget figures, it's, um, it's going backwards. It's a 0.2% cut, and it's going to mean extra strain on the staffing, which is already under stress, on the services um, being provided to the community, on primary health care, on, uh, on, the, on the, the numbers of people who are being referred by their specialists to be, to be getting operations and aren't actually ending up on waiting lists to the pressure on, the, uh, on the, the Dunedin Hospital, which is well over, uh, out of date for being uh, upgraded and replaced, for essentially the whole of the health service throughout that whole region. And again, I say to the, uh, the member, the list member for Dunedin sitting across the house, who's very busy doing his work, Mr. Uh, that this is actually um, a critical area for him to address and certainly one which he will be held accountable in, um, in Dunedin. <coughs> I'd also like to reinforce support for the petition which my uh, Dunedin colleague David Clark has, uh, has, uh, has put out there tonight for to keep the national poison line uh, going. It is my understanding that that poison line, which all you have to do is go to the Labour website, which is labour.org.nz, and it's right on the front page, really easy to connect to and, uh, and sign that petition, is that is the poison line which you, win, which you ring if, uh, if you know someone uh, who, uh, who has uh, been taking the psychoactive substances uh, and, and is suffering um, the health effects of that. And as I understand it, because I've stood in this house on numerous occasions, that the numbers of people reporting effects from those substances has, have increased extraordinarily um, in past months. And to, to axe that poison line would be disastrous and a, an absolute backward statement, and it just make it, it it's gobsmacking to understand why that would actually happen. Mr Speaker, this is a budget that is, takes us backwards. It's an 
it's a budget of inequality. It's a budget that is not focusing on regional job growth. It's a budget that is taking us um, backwards in terms of our health care. It is not a budget that any government could be proud of. I call the honourable member, David Clinton. Uh, Tenakwe, Mr. Speaker. Tenakwe. Thank you. Sir, there's an old saying that no good deed goes unpunished, and I suspect that phrase would resonate with our New Zealand police force at the moment, who have performed in an exemplary manner in, in